In this video, we're going to talk about electric potential and electric potential energy. But let's begin our discussion with this. What is electric potential? Electric potential is defined as potential energy divided by charge. In some physics textbooks, you'll see capital U represented as potential energy. Now, there are different types of potential energy that you need to be familiar with. There is elastic potential energy, that is the energy stored in springs. There's gravitational potential energy, which occurs anytime an object is above ground, which it has the ability to fall. And then there's electric potential energy, which is what we're going to talk about. So if I use PE or U in this particular video, I'm using it with reference to electric potential energy. So V V is electric potential. PE, electric potential energy. Make sure you notice the difference between them. They sound similar, but they're different. Electric potential is measured in volts. One volt is equal to one joule of potential energy per one column of charge. So an electric potential of five volts means that a one column charge has five joules of potential energy. An electric potential of 12 volts means that a one column charge have 12 joules of potential energy with respect to some reference point, of course. Or you could say that two columns of charge has 24 joules of potential energy. So electric potential is simply the ratio of electric potential energy per unit charge. So now that we've defined electric potential as potential energy per unit charge, let's relate it to something more familiar. That is a voltage. A voltage is electric potential difference. Voltage is the change in electric potential. By the way, you may want to take down these notes if you have a piece of paper and a pen with you, or a sheet of paper, rather. So voltage would be the difference between the potential at B and the potential at A. So you can write it this way. So if you were to see VBA, that means VB minus VA. If you were to see VAB, that means the difference in the potential at A minus the potential at B. So let's say we have a resistor. A resistor is an electronic component that is used to basically control the flow of electric current in a metal or in a circuit. Now let's say we have two points of interest across this resistor. We'll call this point A and point B. Actually, let's make this B. Sometimes my computer acts up. Let's do it that way. Let's say B is at 80 volts. A is at 20 volts. The change in V is 80 minus 20. That's 60. The 80 volts represents the electric potential at B. 20 volts is the electric potential at A. So this is VB and this is VA. This is the voltage. Voltage is electric potential difference. It is the difference in the electric potential between two points. So hopefully this helps you to see the connection between voltage and electric potential. The electric potential at B is 80 volts. The electric potential at A is 20 volts but the voltage across the resistor is 60 volts. So we could say VBA, which is the electric potential at B minus A, 80 minus 20, that's 60. Or we could say VAB, 20 minus 80, that's gonna be negative 60. So let's use another example to help you see the difference between voltage and electric potential. 
So let's call this B and let's call this A. So let's say for B, this is at 90 volts and A, it's at negative 30 volts. The electric potential at A is negative 30 volts. The electric potential at B is 90 volts. So what is the voltage across the resistor? Go ahead and calculate VBA and VAB. So to calculate VBA, it's going to be the final value, VB minus the initial value, A. So we're going from, when you think of this, we're going from uh, A to B, initial to final. So that's 90 minus negative 30. So that's positive 120. So VBA is positive 120. Now, if we want to calculate VAB, in analyzing the direction, we're going from uh, B to A. So B becomes the initial value, A becomes the final value. So it's final, VA minus initial. So A, VA is negative 30 minus VB, which is positive 90. So we get negative 120. So let's think about what's happening here in terms of the direction in which we're moving. So during the first part, we're going from A to B. Is the potential increasing or decreasing? As we go from A to B, it changed from negative 30 to 90. So the potential is increasing. Therefore, we got a positive value. Now for the second part, we went from B to A, from a high potential to a low potential. So the potential is decreasing Thus, we can see why the change is negative. So I wanted to help you to understand the reasoning behind these two formulas. So that if you understand what they mean, you'll remember how to write them correctly. Now let's talk about how we can calculate the work done when a charge moves to a certain voltage. Let's say that the direction of motion is from point A to point B. So the voltage, which in this case is going to be VBA, that is the potential at B minus the potential at A. And if you recall, electric potential is equal to the electric potential energy divided by the charge. So VB is going to be the potential energy at B divided by the charge. VA is going to be the potential energy at A divided by the charge. Now I'm going to factor out 1 over Q. Doing so, I will get the potential energy of B minus the potential energy at A. Or we could say the change in potential energy. So we have 1 over Q times the change in potential energy going from A to B. Now, some other formulas that you need to be familiar with are these. Work is equal to the negative, I mean, the positive change of kinetic energy, but the negative change of potential energy. In a system where energy is conserved, as kinetic energy increases, the potential energy decreases. Think of a ball that's fallen down. As it falls from a certain height, its potential energy decreases, but it's speeding up as it approaches the ground, so the kinetic energy goes up. This is true when the only forces acting on the system are conservative forces. That's when mechanical energy will be conserved. If there are non-conservative forces acting on the object, then this may not apply. So just something to keep in mind. But what we need to take from this is that work is equal to the negative change of potential energy. So therefore, the change in potential energy is equal to negative W. So we have 1 over Q times negative W, which we can write as negative W over Q. And that equals delta V. So if delta V is equal to negative W over Q, we can multiply both sides by negative Q to get an expression for W. So the work done by a charge or on a charge as it moves to a certain voltage 
is this equation. It's negative q delta v. Now let's work on this example problem. How much work is required to move a negative 500 microcoulomb charge across a potential difference of 300 volts? For this problem, all we need to do is use this formula. The work is going to be negative q times delta v. So we have the charge. Q is negative 500 microcoulombs, or 500 times 10 to negative 6 coulombs. The voltage, or the change in V, that's the potential difference across two points. So that's positive 300. Now recall, one volt is one joule per one coulomb. Let me write that better. So it's one joule over one coulomb. So we can write this as joules per coulomb. So thus the unit coulombs will cancel, and we're going to get the work in joules. So we have two negative signs, which will make this positive. So it's going to be 500 times 10 to negative 6 times 300. And the work done is going to be 0.15 joules. So that's how much work is required to move this particular negative charge across a potential difference of 300 volts. Number two. 100 joules of work was done by an electric field on a 5 coulomb charge, I forgot to put the word charge, to accelerate it from point A to point B. What is the voltage across points A and B? So let's draw a picture. So let's call this point A, and we're going to call this point B. So we're going to move a charge from point A to point B. And this is a positive charge. So if it takes 100 joules of work to move this 5 coulomb charge from A to B, what's the voltage across it? So we could use this formula to get the voltage. To solve for V, it's going to be the work divided by the charge is equal to delta V. Now the work is 100 joules. The charge is 5 coulombs. I wouldn't really worry about the negative sign too much. I would focus more on direction. But we'll talk more about that. If you were to plug in the negative sign, I mean, you'll just get a negative answer. So 100 divided by negative 5 is negative 20. You can simply say the voltage across points A and B is 20 volts. Now here's a question for you. If the electric potential at point A is 50 volts, what is the electric potential at point B? Now we know the difference is 20. The question is, is it 20 volts higher or 20 volts lower? Would you say if we add 20 to 50, that will be 70. If we subtracted 50 by 20, it will be 30. We know the difference is 20, but which of these two values will be correct? Now looking at this, this is saying that the voltage is negative 20. That's an indication that B should be 20 volts less than A, which will indicate that 30 volts is the answer. But let's confirm it though. Let's say we have two parallel metal plates. Let's say the first one has a positive charge and the second one has a negative charge. Now the electric fill is gonna go from the positively charged plate to the negatively charged plate. Now let's say that at the negatively charged plate, the electric potential is zero the electric potential at the positive plate is going to be higher. It could be 100 volts. Now what's going to happen if we put a positive charge here? Will it move to the negative plate or the positive plate? A positive charge will fill a force that will accelerate it in the same direction as the electric field. So in this case, it's going to be attracted to the negatively charged plate. So notice the direction in which the positive charge moves. The electric field causes the positive charge to move from a high potential 
to a low potential. Now, if there was a negative charge, the electric force, I mean the electric field rather, would cause the negative charge to move from a low potential to a high potential. Now, it's important that you understand that. So I'm just going to summarize this for notes. So for a positive charge, it's going to move from a high potential or high V to a low V. It will accelerate in that direction due to electric field. But a negative charge will accelerate from a low V to a high potential due to electric field. Now, in this problem, the electric field is accelerating the positive charge from point A to point B. And we know that an electric field will accelerate a positive charge from high potential to low potential. So if the 50 volts is considered the high potential, the low potential must be 30. If it was 70, it would be going from low to high and not high to low. So conceptually, that's how you can determine that this is indeed the correct answer. And of course, if you use the fact that the voltage change is negative 20, that helps you to see that it's going from high to low as well. But in the event that you didn't take the negative sign into an, into an account, just understanding this concept will help you to see that the positive charge is going to move towards a lower voltage. So conceptually, you would know that you need to subtract 20 and not add 20 to get the answer. If we were dealing with a negative charge, we would add 20. The negative charge will go from a low potential to a high potential, but the positive charge will go from a high potential to a low potential when accelerated by an electric field. Number three, a positive charge is released from rest at point A as shown in the figure below. As it accelerates toward point B, is the charge's electric potential energy increasing or decreasing? What would you say? Well, we know that there's going to be an electric field that will emanate from the positively charged plate and it's directed towards the negatively charged plate. Now we also know that the charge is going to feel a force that will accelerate it in the same direction as the electric field. So it's going to accelerate towards point B and then towards point C. Now how can we describe what's happening re with regard to the charge's uh, potential energy? Well, since there's a force that's accelerating the charge towards point B, there must be an acceleration. Based on Newton's second law, the net force is equal to ma. So if there's a force, there's an acceleration. Now what's happening to the speed of the charged particle if it's accelerating? It's accelerating towards the right. Its velocity is increasing, and therefore the magnitude of the speed is going to increase as well. So V is increasing for this particular particle. If the speed is increasing, what's going to happen to the kinetic energy, which basically answers part B. As the speed increases, the kinetic energy of this positive charge is going to go up, which means that the change in kinetic energy is positive. Now, if the kinetic energy increases, what's going to happen to the potential energy? As the kinetic energy goes up, the potential energy goes down. We don't have any non-conservative forces acting on a positive charge. The only force acting on it is the electric force due to electric field, which is a conservative force like gravity. So therefore, the mechanical energy of the positive charge will remain constant. The mechanical energy is the sum of the kinetic energy and the potential energy. So if the mechanical energy is constant due to the lack of any non-conservative forces acting on the charge, as Ke goes up, Pe must go down. So since the potential energy decreases, the change in the potential energy will be negative. Now what about part C? Is the work done on this particular charge, is it positive or negative? work is equal to the change in kinetic energy. So if the change in kinetic energy is positive, 
the work done on this positive charge is also going to be positive. Now let's get rid of this. There's another way in which we can analyze the work done, if it's positive or negative. Keep in mind, work is force times displacement. If the force vector and the displacement vector are in the same direction, the work done is going to be positive. If the force vector and the displacement vector are in opposite directions, the work done is negative. Now, if the force vector is perpendicular to the displacement vector, so if they're at right angles, then the work done is zero. So let's use this to confirm our answer. In this example, the charge feels a force that's accelerating it towards the right. So that's the force vector. It's heading due east. Now what about the displacement vector? Where is the charge moving? Is it moving to the left or to the right? Well, we know it's going to move towards the negatively charged plate in the direction of the electric field. So the displacement vector for this charge is towards the right. Because the force and the displacement vector are in the same direction, the work done on that charge is positive. Its kinetic energy will increase. Now for part D, we're going to repeat parts A through C. So the new situation is that the positive charge is going to start at point B. So it's, it's at point B, and at this instant, it's moving to the left. So going back to part A, actually, let's do part B first. Is the kinetic energy increasing or decreasing? So let's think about what's happening here. The charge is moving towards point A. However, the electric field is still towards the right. So therefore, it's still going to feel an electric force towards the right. So what does it mean when F and V are opposite in direction? Let's talk about that. When the force vector and the velocity vector are in the same direction, this means that the object is accelerating. It's speeding up. The force vector and the acceleration vector are in the same direction. So think of F and A as being similar. Now, if the force vector and the velocity vector are opposite to each other, the object is slowing down. It's decelerating towards the left. It's accelerating towards the right if you look at just the positive sign, but the signs of acceleration and velocity are different. Therefore, it's going to be slowing down. So make sure you understand that. If the force and velocity vectors are in the same direction, the object is going to be speeding up. If they're in opposite directions, the object is slowing down. And then if the force and velocity vectors are perpendicular to each other, the object is neither speeding up or slowing down, but it's going to turn. And it's going to do so at constant speed, which means that we're going to have circular motion. Now in this example, the force and the velocity vectors are opposite to each other, which means it's going to be slowing down. The speed is going to be decreasing. If it's slowing down, that means that the kinetic energy is decreasing. Therefore, the change in kinetic energy is negative now. If the kinetic energy is decreasing, that means that the potential energy, the electric potential energy is increasing. So the change in electric potential energy is going to be positive. Now what about the work done? Since the change in kinetic energy is negative, the work done on this particle, or on this positive charge, is going to be negative as well. Because this force, it's not accelerating the charge, it's slowing it down. It's decreasing its kinetic energy. And therefore, because the electric force is decreasing the kinetic energy of the charge, we could say that it's doing negative work on it. It's slowing it down, not speeding it up. Now, let's look at force and displacement. For the positive charge, the force vector is due east. 
But because the velocity vector is due west, that means that it's moving to the left. So it's going to have a displacement in the negative x direction, at least for a time, until it changes direction. But while it's moving to the left, the displacement vector is directed to the left. Whenever the force and displacement vectors are opposite to each other, we can see that the work done is going to be negative. Therefore, the electric field is not speeding up the particle, it's slowing it down. It's doing negative work on it. Number four, how much work is required to move a negative 50 microcoulomb charge from an electric potential of negative 50 volts to 250 volts? Let's call this point A, point B. So this time the electric field vector is gonna be pointing towards the left, away from the positive charge towards the negatively charged plate. Now, the positively charged plate is gonna have a higher potential. It's gonna be at an electric potential of 250. The negatively charged plate, it makes sense that it's gonna be at a lower potential or an electric potential of negative 50. The voltage between these two is the difference of those two numbers. But before we calculate voltage, let's write the equation for work. Work is gonna be negative Q times the voltage. Now the charge, the negative charge is gonna feel a force that will accelerate it in the direction opposite to the electric field. It's gonna to accelerate towards the positively charged plate. So the negative charge is going from A to B. So B is the final position, A is the initial position. So if it's going from A to B, the change in voltage or the sign of delta V, will it be positive or negative? The negative charge is going from a low potential to a high potential. So because the potential is increasing, the voltage should have a positive sign. So it's being accelerated across a positive voltage. Delta V is going to be VB minus VA. So the final potential that it experiences is 250. The initial potential is negative 50. So 250 minus negative 50, that's 250 plus 50, so that's 300. So we have a negatively charged particle with a charge of negative 50 microcoulombs. And it's accelerating through a potential difference of positive 300 volts. So remember, an electric field will accelerate a negatively charged particle from a low potential to a high potential. However, an electric field will accelerate a positive charge from a high potential to a low potential. So if we had a positive charge, it will go towards the low potential plate or negative 50. But since we're dealing with a negative charge, it's going to go from low V to high V. Now these two negative signs will cancel. So to get our, to get our answer, it's going to be 50 times 10 to the negative 6 times 300. And so the work is going to be 0 0.015 joules. Now the answer is positive. The question is, does the sign of the work make sense? The work done on this negative charge, should it be positive or negative? Well, since we got a positive answer from the formula, chances are this is correct. But let's analyze it. In what direction is the electron moving, from left to right or right to left? We know that it's going from A to B, from a low potential to a high potential. So therefore, the displacement vector is towards B because it's moving in that direction. Now, because the force and the displacement vector are parallel to each other, they're in the same direction, the work done by the electric field on the negative charge is positive. These two vectors are parallel to each other in the same direction. Now, let's analyze it from the other angle. We know that this charge is accelerating towards the right. Therefore, it's speeding up. If the speed is increasing, the kinetic energy is increasing, which means the change in kinetic energy is positive. Therefore, 
the work done on that charge is positive as well. We could say that the electric field does positive work on the negative charge because it's increasing its kinetic energy. It's making it move faster. So now let's move on to the next part, part B. If the charge accelerates from rest, what is the final speed if it has a mass of 0 0.01 kilograms? I mean, 0 0.01 grams. Now we know that work is equal to the change in kinetic energy. And the change in kinetic energy is the final kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy. Kinetic energy depends on the speed. There is no kinetic, ener there is no kinetic energy if a particle or an object is not moving. So notice that it accelerates from rest. Therefore, the initial speed is zero, which means that the initial kinetic energy is zero. So if this is zero, we could say that the work is equal to the final kinetic energy. So let's go ahead and use that formula. So for this particular example, because it accelerates from rest, work is equal to the final kinetic energy. And the final kinetic energy is 1 half mv squared. So the work is 0 0.015 joules. And then the mass is 0 0.01 grams, but we need to convert that to kilograms. To convert grams to kilograms, here's what we can do. Keep in mind, there's 1,000 grams per 1 kilogram. So you need to divide. 0 0.01 divided by 1,000 is 1 times 10 to the negative 5 kilograms, which is 0 0.00001. So now let's solve for V. If we take 0 0.015 divided by 0 0.5 and then take that result divided by 1 times 10 to the negative 5, you'll get that 3,000 is equal to v squared. Now let's take the square root of both sides. The square root of 3,000 is 54.77. So this is going to be the final speed of the negative charge as it accelerates from an electric potential of negative 50 to 250.